Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another how to use video right here at Sonic Academy. My name is Nate Robin. I'm of Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles. Today we're going to be taking a look at a sample management app uh, called Sonanum. It's a sort of AI enhanced uh, sample manager. It does some pretty incredible stuff as far as controlling and managing your sample library. Let's dive in and check this out. Right, so here we have Sonanum. So as I said, it's a librarian, a sample librarian or slash manager, uh, but that can scan and identify your waves, uh, your, your sounds intelligently. Now there's a bunch of other sample managers out there, some of them free and pretty, uh, pretty decent. Uh, however, to my knowledge, most of them are all based around the actual physical naming structure of the files that you have. Uh, so if there's something that you uh, that's not named correctly or that doesn't contain the word clap, for example, in it, uh, it's not going to identify that as a clap. Um, in a nutshell, the best way to describe what Sonanum does is kind of like Google's image search that can actually identify specific objects in an image and then uh, list them in a search. Except this does that for audio. So before we get into this, uh, let's just take a look at how to set this up and a few of the options uh, that you have. Uh, coming up to the top, you've got just basic sort of files, uh, file functionality, export collections, etc. We'll come to the collections in just a bit. Um, the playback, you've got a play random file, which is kind of useful uh, just for browsing through random things. Uh, you can loop them as well and st start playback recording. There we go, just uh, escape and play select a file space. Uh, view, you can view collections, we'll come to the collections in just a sec. Uh, you've got some options for the columns here, you can have date modified, sample rates, channels, etc. These are the defaults that are showed, uh, showing pitch, BPM, brightness, hom hominicity and noisiness. We're going to get to that as well when we jump into the similarity search. Um, yeah, and that pretty much covers the basics at the top. You've got a few other controls for uh, looping and play back a lot of the sort of functionality in the menu bar is duplicated in the actual main window here. Um, now you've got an explore mode which is essentially like Windows Explorer. What you're going to be doing is heading in here, finding a uh, directory where your samples are stored. Um, in this case I'm actually using it to just browse through my native instruments content because I do like to use these outside of things like battery for example. Um, but they're a bit of a mess because they're all installed in the same folder. I don't really know what's inside them half the time. So if you're not using the complete control browser or uh, whatever, um, a native instruments instrument that has all the tagging in it, uh, it can be quite hard to actually find this stuff. And there's a lot of usable, usable stuff in here that you kind of want to have access to. Um, so once you've got your... Uh, base folder set up you can go and convert uh, switch this to a library and that will scan all your files it takes a little while initially but once it's done um, it's not too long to wait for it to initialize the library now if we jump back into the libraries mode this is kind of where you're going to be doing most of your work let me just add as well that this is not a plugin it's a separate app that runs externally uh, it just uses the windows audio drivers um, but it's drag and drop so whatever you find here you can just drag directly into Cubase or export to a collection which I'll show you in a bit. Um, so let's just take a look at the tagging and just kind of show you the real magic behind this app and why it's such a cool sample manager this. Um, you can focus on specific directories if you'd like and then you'll see it now has a, a tag enabled here that battery for factory library is basically set as one of the filters for the search. So everything that comes up here is going to be from that uh, directory there. Uh, we can go back to all files again and it'll jump back to the overall uh, um, search for the whole uh, root folder that we've got set up there. Um, so let's jump down to the bottom quickly uh, and take a look at some of the tags and then I'll show you how this actually works. So let's say for instance we are looking for uh, some drum samples. Let's say we want to look for a kick. We'll just hit kick and you can see we now have an active filter that says kicks here. And everything that we play now will be a kick sample. Uh, 
Uh, if we look through each individual samples, according to the um, columns that we had set up, you can see we have one shots here, kicks, and then we have some other info, the length, uh, RMS, and you have pitch and the brightness, harmon harmonicity, and noisiness. And now we can actually use that to find more samples that are similar to these. We can also just refine the tagging as well if we'd like. You can go in here, look at file info, RMS loudness. Um, let's say we want to find kicks all of a similar uh, loudness. We can turn that on. It will refine the search once again. You'll see RMS set as a tag. So now all of these will have a similar volume or, or overall uh, RMS. Um, we can go in and look at note frequency, for example, if you're looking for sort of tonal stuff or multi-sampled instruments, this is really handy to find specific uh, pitches. Uh, you can do it by the specific note. Uh, select an E, for example, we'll find kicks that are tuned to E. And you can also do by note range. So you can select a range of keys. Uh, in this case with kicks, you're gonna probably wanna go down a little bit lower. Um, in the case of loops, you have BPM and tempo, which you can enable as well. And you can filter out the brightness, harmonicity, and noisiness as well, yeah. But let's just take a look at the similarity search, and this is where this really shines. We'll find a kick that we like. Actually, let's take something like that. Uh, an acoustic kick, for example. And what you're going to want to do is go and hit this little rainbow colored wheel on the left hand side. And this is the search by similarity function. Uh, if we click that, you'll see you get this readout at the top here with various different colors showing you uh, the sort of scores that this has for harmonicity, uh, pitch, et cetera, et cetera, timbre, amplitude. And you'll get a similarity readout showing how similar each of these samples are to this one that we've selected. And it'll then list them descending, uh, obviously the ones being the most similar up at the top, all the way down to the ones that are less similar further down. So let's just run through this and see what it's come up with for us. And it's actually, uh, it's done its job correctly. So these are multi samples or layers, different layers and one shots for these acoustic kicks inside a battery. And it's found all the same, all the same samples from that specific kit. Let's run down a little bit further. So we're out of that kit now. And you can hear there's quite a lot of similarity in a lot of the attack phases of all these kicks that we found. And you can keep doing this over and over and over again until you find stuff that you're looking for. Let's say, I like that one that's a little bit more electronic. It's got that sort of slightly acoustic attack to it, but I want that more electronic sound. So we can readjust our search parameters and search by similarity to this file instead. And it'll redo the similarity search again. And let's browse through some of the results. And there's a whole bunch of similar kicks. You'll notice as well that it's found all similar pitch ranges here at the top. So most of these are tuned to the same as the uh, root kick that we've picked out. And yeah, it's done a pretty good job in this case, uh, favoring the harmonicity here. And then a couple of the other uh, parameters, it's kind of matched up accordingly, accordingly as well. Um, you'll see as well, uh, you can search manually for parts of the name as well basically if you type in a clap over here it'll search through the actual names of the plug of, of the files and list those according to the search that you put in um, you'll see also here it's actually automatically generated a number of uh, different tags based on the naming structure of the files as well uh, so we can maybe use some of these let's go with sub and see what it comes up with And we'll go with low as well. You 
and that's pretty good i'm quite happy with those results and a lot of the time it comes up with stuff that you don't even know that you had or stuff that you wouldn't have actually thought of searching for um we can jump we'll clear all of these you can go and remove the filters again and let's do something completely different we'll jump back to the categories mode and let's search for something uh, a little bit less obvious than a kick for example let's go with wishes and whips and see what it comes up with and there you go and these all sound like wishes and whips um, now it does get it wrong sometimes uh, for instance it's found a snare yeah which is obviously not a wish and whip but if we listen to the snare it's reversed um, so it's definitely it's it's kind of intelligently found sounds that might not be named as wishes and whips but it still has elements that adhere to that category uh, because it's doing this through AI and actually scanning the actual audio content inside of the uh, audio files. Uh, we'll take another look at something else. Let's go for nature and atmospheric. So yeah, it's found a sweep, for example, uh, but in this case, the sweep kind of sounds like noise. So it, uh, it sounds like wind. So it's actually has quite accurately found that as well. I mean, that could quite easily pass off as a uh, wind sample. There we go, Nature and Atmospheric. It's found some sort of ambient uh, recordings. Uh, let's try the similarity search again on this and see what it comes up with. And there you have it. It's found a whole bunch of sort of field recordings, all nature or atmospheric recordings, and intelligently listed them all for you so that you can start scanning through them. It also is aware of what's one shots and what's loops. So if we go to loop, it'll automatically find all the loops in here as well. Let's just for the sake of this demo, try this out on a sort of musical loop like this and see what we get. So you can see these quite differ from this first one that we selected, but if you look at the similarity dial here, they are a little bit less similar to that according to this readout. But these ones that we're selecting here all have quite similar tones and playing through these, it's got it exactly right once again uh, and done a pretty good job of that. Uh, and then obviously, again, you can go in and start sort of uh, fine tuning this by adjusting the brightness or whatever of the loops that you're doing. So now I just wanted to take a look at uh, the collections uh, feature that you have as well. Let's do another search. Uh, let's this time let's go for uh, let's go for pads and textures, for example. And it's actually picked up uh, the preview files as well from my complete uh, control. Uh, let's just grab something here. So we'll take this, we'll do a similarity search, it'll find a whole bunch of stuff for us. And we can jump into this section here, which is your collections. Um, so I already have an untitled collection here, you can actually just create a new, uh, you can create folders inside of this as well. Um, to add a new collection, you can add here. So let's go and add a collection called, uh, we were doing textures. That's kind of like a dark texture that we have there. So let's call this dark textures and go OK. So now we have a new collection here. Uh, you'll see this collection is currently empty and you can then uh, 
add samples that you find. Go with that. So now we have a couple of these added to our collection. As I said, you can actually add folders and organize this even further if you have quite large collections. Now the cool thing with the collections is they kind of scale down versions of um, of your full library. So you can do sessions where you're kind of just making collections of different files uh, and just discovering stuff in your sample library and then have these scaled down versions which are a lot easier and quicker to access. And then on top of that, uh, you have this export function, which will actually then create copies of all the files that you have in your main sample library. And you can actually export that whole um, set of files to a new directory. Uh, let's say, for instance, um, one place that this is super handy to have is if you have a ton of field recordings. Um, now, with field recordings as well, um, chances are you haven't labeled them all as, you know, teaspoon or cup or whatever. Um, they'll just be sort of numerically ordered files that you've recorded on a uh, field recorder or whatever. And this will be able to actually scan those files and it'll know what's inside of them um, through this AI. Uh, but then let's say you have a ton of these field recordings and you want to kind of create... Um, smaller collections that you can either bundle up into new sample libraries for editing or whatever um, without having to sort of go and separately move those uh, in file explorer uh, or if you're in windows or, or apple um, apple's file manager uh, you can just have this thing export the whole thing as is into a collection and you'll have that separate from your sample library to do with what you want um, which is a super handy little function to have as well so there you have it. That pretty much covers the basics with Sonanim. It's a really, really, really clever little app, this. Um, as you've seen, uh, it's pretty damn good at uh, recognizing stuff accurately. And even when it's not 100% correct, uh, there's often tonal elements in the, 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 the search results that are quite close to what you're looking for. And in those cases, I've found quite often um, where I've been looking for a crash and it's found uh, a sample that is not in a, uh, a folder of crashes at all, but it has those elements of a crash. And it's a really cool, great sample that I would have never found if I didn't have this searching for me. Um, yeah, I mean, a really, really clever little thing. You can sit for ages going through your sample libraries, just sort of discovering new sounds and getting ideas. So yeah, the Sonanim, go check this one out. It's a really, really, really cool app, this. I love this. Um, very clever how they've managed to implement this tech into this browser. Great, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I will catch you soon right here at Sonic Academy. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.